Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, uh, a little bit of fun. We're going to upgrade the crystal on a Seiko SKX007 uh, from Hardlex to Sapphire. Uh, sapphire is scratch resistant. Uh, Hardlex is a decent material. It's like a hardened mineral, uh, but it will scratch over time if you bang it into stuff, whereas Sapphire is extremely scratch resistant. So this is a simple modification. Uh, a modification that's going to be mostly transparent, uh, pun, pun intended or no pun intended. Uh, you, you know, most people, well, actually everybody, won't be able to tell that it's sapphire. Uh, but you'll know because after a bunch of years, the watch will, will still look brand new. Uh, but I'm going to replace it with a uh, flat, uh, flat crystal. Uh, there are other options out there. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't take long. It's not difficult. You know, you just got to take your time. Uh, you know, just because this is how we replace the crystal on this watch doesn't mean your diver from a different brand is the same exact way, although it's probably pretty close. Uh, but some crystals, you know, don't go in this way. Divers usually do, uh, but, you know, different watches, the crystals are lifted out from the top of the crystal lifter, or they might be glued in with adhesive. So, you know, just be careful. Do a little research <laughs> before you go and uh, put your watch in a press and... Uh, you know, break something. Anyway, I uh, so I'll do my own wrist check today. I'm only wearing one watch. Uh, it's this Swatch Irony and Soul or Body and Soul Irony. I always get confused, but this is my skeleton watch that you've seen in a bunch of. Whoops, look at that. My clasp was open. Uh, that you see in a bunch of the uh, watch and learn videos because it's really cool that it's it's all open. Anyway, uh, let's get over to the table and let's see how to uh, swap out the crystal on the 007. So I have in front of you here a uh, Seiko SKX007 and a replacement crystal. This is a sapphire crystal that I purchased online for about $30 or so from a popular uh, parts supplier. And it is 31 and a half millimeters in diameter by two and a half millimeters thick. And that is the same exact size as the crystal on the 007, the 009, the 173, the 175. Uh, all those watches uh, share the same crystal size. So obviously before you start and, and you need to order the parts, you need to find out what crystal size your watch is. That might be available from the manufacturer uh, or you can find it online, but you do need to get the right size. Uh, even if it's half a millimeter off, it's not going to fit properly. It will be too big and you'll crack it or too small and it won't it won't make a seal and it'll probably just fall right out. The crystal is pressed in uh, with friction and so we basically have to press it out but to get to the crystal we need to uh, take everything out. So we're going to take the watch apart. So I'm going to shelve the crystal for a minute and what we'll do is we're going to take the back of the watch off. Uh, you can watch one of the other watch and learns where I show you how to remove various case backs. Then we're going to remove the movement with the dial and the hands complete. And then from there, we'll be able to press the crystal out. And then we'll put the new Sapphire one in and we'll reverse the process. Uh, it is important to note I'm not doing this in my normal work area, so it won't be as uh, clean as I would normally like it. I won't be able to spot all the dust, so uh, don't, uh, don't jump down my throat if you see dust at the end because uh, this is not exactly the way I would normally do it. Uh, but... Another thing is I am using a direct replacement. So you can actually, I just saw a fingerprint on the crystal. So this watch has been opened several times. Again, this is one of the watches from the junk bin. There you can see the fingerprint. Uh, this is a direct replacement. Basically, it's this is a flat mineral, uh, excuse me, a flat hardlex crystal. I am replacing it with a flat sapphire crystal. There are other options out there. Uh, there's domes, double domes, AR coated, tinted. You can get whatever you want. Uh, the 007 is a great place to start with modifications because there's a lot of people out there that make parts specifically for the watch, whether it be bezel inserts, hands, dials, crystals, case backs, etc. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, the Honda Civic of the world. You know, there's a lot of aftermarket stuff. So we're going to take the case back off and we'll get to work. So I've removed the case back and now we're looking at, you know, the, the movement of the watch. You see the rotor, and we have to release the crown to pull the movement out because the stem is going through the movement. So to do that, I'm going to try to get good lighting on it. I have to unscrew the crown, and then it just popped. And then when I look over here, over, uh, I'll zoom in in a second, by my thumb, there's a little lever. And as you, when you pull out the crown set at the time, you see that lever moving? At the top, there's a little button that you press to pull the crown out. And it actually does peekaboo when you pull the crown out. 
Um, so that's an easy way to know that that's how this crown comes out. Uh, not all watches are the same. Some watches you have to pull the crown out to you know to release the stem. So you know just make sure you know what you're doing first because you can mess up the keyless works on the watch if you do this incorrectly. So it is this little piece right here. I'm going to press this and I'm going to pull the crown out. So I'm going to lay it down flat so it's easier for me. But that's all I'm doing is I'm pressing this and then you'll see me pull this simultaneously. Press, pull. And it really does come out that easily. And you can see on the winding stem, or excuse me, the stem, this really isn't a winding stem, uh, the various configurations when you pull, push and pull it that engage uh, different wheels to change the time and the date. I uh, covered this in the water resistance video. This is the gasket that seals the watch uh, against uh, you know water intrusion, obviously. There is no gasket inside the crown. The gasket is strictly on the stem. So even when the crown is pulled, the, water, the watch is still water resistant. So next step is to remove the movement uh, with the dial and the hands attached. Uh, you could flip it over and knock it into your palm. You know, a sharp hit might do it. If not, uh, you might need to lift it with a tweezer or a tool. You just got to get under somewhere and pull it. But I will. There you goes. Right off in my hand. Again, I'm really not concerned about cleanliness or anything right now. I uh, I should now go deposit this on a movement holder uh, to keep it you know away from damage. But I'm really just going to shelve the whole piece. Uh, but for those of you interested, that is the dial and hands. Uh, everything is together. I'm just going to pop it over here. So now we have the case. So it's got the bezel, the crystal, and uh, the chapter ring on it. So the next job is to pop this crystal out. So the crystal comes out this way. And for this, a crystal press, a bezel press, whatever you want, a case press, is definitely the simplest tool. Uh, it's not held in with a ton of force. Uh, I doubt you can be able to push it out with your finger. Eh, maybe you will, I don't know. Um, but if you use a crystal press or whatever you, know, whatever you want to call these presses, uh, you can really get you know even pressure and you don't have to worry about cracking the crystal. But you really don't want to crack it. Then it leaves little shards of glass all around the outside stuck in the crystal gasket. Uh, and it, it, it's a mess. So I have a bunch of dies and I'll, that work in my press. And you know some of them are concave dies and some of them are solid dies. This was a cheap press that I bought. You saw it in the bezel video. I, it's got all nylon dies. The expensive ones have metal dies usually. I, I think this is great because I don't have to worry about scratching the watch. But the idea here is going to be I'm going to support this side of the watch with a concave die like this, like this one here. Put it here so that it touches just the outside of the bezel but not the crystal. And then I will take a flat die maybe like like this one and I'll put it in and we'll press and we'll get the uh, crystal to pop out. So I'm going to set up and then I will uh, start again when I'm ready to press it out. Okay, so the idea here again is that on the bottom I have a concave die that's just holding the bezel and on the top I have the largest die possible that can go in and hit the crystal and not touch the, the uh, walls of the case. You don't want it to get hung up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just steady it with my hand. I'm going to feel and make sure the die is inside the case and it's not it's actually crooked so I'm gonna fix it so again it's kinda of tough for me to do and you know what I think this die might be a little bit too big let's see nope it's not It's perfect I thought it was but it worked so there we go you can see a lot of stuff came out so I'm gonna reset and uh, I'll zoom in again so here we are back I didn't touch a thing I just lowered the camera uh, I've got the concave die and here is the crystal you see it sat right in there you see the, this crystal actually has a bit of a lead-in or a chamfer on it to ease it into the gasket so let's put this old hardlex crystal aside and now here's the case no crystal and you'll see I actually did pop out the uh, chapter ring because the chapter ring just lays inside and this is probably the topic for another watch and learn it absolutely is you see that keyhole right there one second you see that little keying tab right there there here is the chapter ring you can also buy aftermarket chapter rings for this stuff uh, the chapter ring has a little tab you can see it at the end here you see a little thing sticking up right there that actually mates into that into that key in the case and that's what tries to send to the chapter ring I imagine over the years that they've loosened up tolerances on printing and everything else, and, and thus you get the uh, some of the chapter ring problems that you might read about online. 
So that's the complete assembly with the uh, chapter ring, which comes out through the crystal side and the bezel in the case. Uh, you, there is a crystal gasket here. You can see me lifting it. Uh, it does appear to be totally undamaged. I'm not going to replace it. Sometimes you do have to replace it. That is what maintains the water resistance from the top side when the crystal is pressed. So what we're going to do now is just reverse the process. I'm going to go ahead, get the sapphire crystal out of the package, press it in, and then just reverse the whole procedure to put the watch back together. So grab my crystal. It's right here. And you can see it You know, pretty much looks very much the same. I mean, you know, the outcome of this experiment or this little, you know, modification we're doing is really not going to be visual. It's going to be more for, uh, you know, wear and tear over the years. You know, it won't scratch up. But there really is no lead-in on this crystal. I'm going to seat the crystal so that it's kind of even. Yeah, a little bit of finger pressure. It's not really even a little bit. They'll even it out. And now we go back doing the same thing we just did. Uh, we're going to now press it in. So now this time we want to press on the crystal with a die. So we'll find a nice die that matches the size pretty well. This one looks pretty good. So that will go on the top of the tool. For the bottom, we just need something that's going to you know hold the case, you know, not slip. That way we can you know we can get a uh, you know a lot of force applied to it. So I'm going to use this concave die just because it seems to do the trick. So I'll put that on the bottom. I'll put the watch in. We'll reset and then I'll uh, z you know go from the top again. So I'm going to put the case in. I'm going to make sure everything looks centered. And I'm going. This requires a decent amount of force. And you heard that. Maybe you thought I snapped the crystal. Uh, that was the crystal seating in. And now it's in. That's it. Sapphire crystal is now installed in the case. Now, we're not going to check it for water resistance because I don't have a water resistance machine you know, when we're all done. Uh, ideally, you'd want to, especially since it's a, it is a, a scuba watch or a diving watch. Uh, you know, even just check it to at least three atmospheres or so to make sure that you know, the uh, gasket was not compromised and that it's still uh, doing everything it's supposed to do. And then after you get the crystal seated, you want to pick it up, rotate it around, make sure that it's still flush uh, with the bezel everywhere. You can put it back in the press and just squeeze certain areas down. Uh, but, you know, it looks like we have a good fit. So now we'd have to reverse the entire process. So first thing we got to do is get the movement. We'll put the movement in, insert the crown, and put the case back uh, back on. Of course, we want to make sure that everything is clean, uh, compressed air. We'll blow the crystal out, uh, make sure we get all the dust out. You know, all the, uh, you know, little details that after you put it together and you look at it and all of a sudden you see a piece of dust on it, and then you gotta take the whole thing apart and and clean it all over again. So you gotta be really careful and just make sure that everything uh, is good. But I'm gonna do it quickly uh, for the camera's sake and uh, we'll get this rolling. I have the movement in my hands and the case, we'll line it all up, press, it's in, crown and stem. We'll get those guys together in. We just gotta feel our way around a little bit. We'll get it. That's it, in, it's locked, pull it out, time changes, good. Now the crown is in, all that remains to uh, put the case back on, and that you've seen in some of the other videos. Uh, in the process of removing this case back, the gasket did come out, so you can lay the gasket in here, and push it in, clean it, lubricate it, you know, whatever you have to do. Case back goes on, and then you spin it on, and you can install it with your favorite case tool, or uh, you know that popular ball that I showed you. And that's it, Seiko SKX007 with the uh, Sapphire upgrade. It does not take long at all. It's not difficult, just with most things. You know, you just got to take your time. Uh, not so much in the specialized tool arena, I mean, uh, a press. But these presses, you know, that I showed you, you know, they're extremely inexpensive. And I've had this press easily for a dozen years. And maybe I use it, you know, once a month or you know whatever and not even I don't even use it often uh, but it la it lasts forever I don't have to worry about it um, other than that you know no, no real major specialty tools you just got to put the bracelet back on uh, and you are ready to go so this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you how to upgrade the Hardlex crystal on your Seiko to Sapphire if you like this video please like it 
If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so at this time. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.